Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Dodge Central. My name is Alex Such. My name is Matt Wheel. And we are your commentators today for this featured game from the English Women's Super League at round three. We've got Leamington Spartans against Derby Phantoms. Yeah, uh, excited to see this game. This is the uh, top two teams in the league at the minute. Phantoms currently on 12 points out of 12 possible points, six wins, zero draws, zero losses. Very impressive start to the season. Spartans on 11 points with five wins and one draw. So on paper, Phantoms ahead. They should take this, but these two teams haven't come together yet. This is, I think, going to be one of the better games of the season. What are you expecting to see today, Alex? Uh, again, similar thoughts to you. I think I'm expecting a very good game. Obviously, Leamington Spartans are the reigning champions from last season. Um, but Phantoms were very much there the entire time and they have actually gained obviously Immy Sharp moving over across from Beagles so they've gained a huge strength in that regard and especially on the side of Spartans today uh, Lucy Barrington you can see in the, in the coach box over there she is actually suffering from an ankle injury and won't be playing this game she's got her knee pads on I think that's kind of a if things are going really really bad I'll try step on court but I can't imagine we're going to be seeing her stepping on today so I think Realistically, Phantoms being full strength, currently ahead in the table, I would probably maybe lean towards the side of Phantoms, just because of that wing pressure that they usually bring on. Uh, how about you? Um, yeah, I honestly, I, I could not call it. I think the um, the level from both of these teams at the top of the table is, is so good, and both of them are capable of putting on that performance. Uh, on their day, maybe it just depends who, uh, as commentators like to say, who wants it more, that kind of drive, mm. um, who's really got their head in the game. First hit there for Spartans from, uh, was that uh, Pickering from the middle, yep. uh, claims uh, the first point. We have got a stoppage in time here though, I think Storch saying there's a bit of an issue with one of the balls, but shouldn't be Good a problem, start. we have many spares. Yeah, replacement balls to get things uh, kicked off back already. So uh, Spartans winning the first mental victory with a single ball hit there. Um, I think it's some really strong throwers on both <coughs> sides, makes those single balls dangerous. Uh, but what we've seen with both teams, kind of how they dominate other teams in the in the league, is the, the aggression on the running counters, the, the strong wing pressure. And then uh, when the other team throws, whether they throw one or two, they're really fast up court getting those running counters off. Uh, and getting right up in your face, trying to beat the speed of the backtrack, and it's uh, it's very difficult to deal with. You can see there on the uh, Spartan side the uh, the aggression as as Phantoms trying to come forward to keep the pin back, getting high line from the Spartan side uh, on that three ball attack means that Phantoms can't get a clean throw off. And again, we see the two Phantoms wingers, nice high line, trying to keep that pressure off, try and pin back the three ball attack. Spartans so it's going to be a bit of a battle of that who can get the most confident three ball attacks off who can put the most pressure on and put the other Ooh, side off and a hit back race. there nice good shot there from the uh, Phantoms to get that hit back but again that running counter they see Phantoms release too and they're right back on it to get that hit back 5-4 for Spartans at the minute great blocking from White an incredible catch from Darcy on the opposite side. I think takes a block catch, one-handed, to take out Mans and bring back in a player for the Phantom side. What a swing that was. We're seeing that aggression from both wingers there. On both sides, Spartans came up on the running counter and Phantoms, both wingers just held their ground and they went for the trade and that was it. We see some uh, some big clashes on the on the wings here. Post there from uh, Storch searching just under the legs of of Tranter. Single ball trying to get that cross court from Tranter onto Pickering. Yeah, and I think uh, an interesting sort of factor I think we're going to see playing into effect in this game is, as we mentioned, due to the just sort of the strength of the wingers on either side, neither team is really going to want to release two balls because it leaves you so vulnerable to that counter. So it's a, more of a lot of singles. But then the issue is both of these teams really good at catching the middle players, phenomenal catches. So there's a higher risk you're then going to be caught. So accuracy needs to be spot on when you're on those singles. 
Yeah, as we see there, even just releasing one, uh, Phantoms are confident enough to come up and get that uh, running counter. But the cover is good from Spartans to get the hit back. That's the important bit here. Even if Phantoms or Spartans have really strong running counters, it's all about that next phase of play. Does the team have the cover to get the hit back, even if the running counter is successful? And I'll tell you what, both teams absolutely do have that. Coming towards the end of the set here, low on time. A bounce into the knees of Smith there. Uh, from White, can't quite get the hit in the dying seconds. Phantoms take the first set, three to two players um, by just a hair, but that's going to put Phantoms 2 0 up and we're back to six on six players. Good mental win for uh, Phantoms getting that first win in. Spartans are going to want to dig deep and get a set back before things start getting away. Yeah, Phantoms winning the middle ball there, but the third ball pinging backwards off court, so cover not quite there. The slow calls being sounded from the Phantom side. Well, aggressive post throw there from Storch. Tranter goes low. Wants, the, wants that ball to come into a, uh, into a gut on that post throw. Ah, just like that, Darcy throws the uh, aggressive single. Mans tries to get to the post throw, but uh, Darcy is ready on the back track. You can't put that in the basket because uh, she will absolutely take that catch. Great hit from Gedling though, taking out Alum. Yeah, this time similar throw, but a little more on the on the side. I think is a is a bit of a better area and gets that hit against Alum. Early catch for uh, the Phantom side, but with six players on, it's only a one player out. So that, that post throw hit brings Spartans level again at five five. You see some. Uh, singles and aggressive post throws. I like this kind of play from the from the women's Super League. I think this is when it's really at its best when we've got these ooh, strong single ball attacks, a nice cross court there, and then Spanton's coming up aggressively looking for the for the running counter. I think Storch there just apologising, maybe not the uh, the best throw on that running counter, but is, the aggression sure is there. Free throw from Millington. It's a great shot into the foot of Gedling though. Yeah, still get the single off. That's the main benefit of the, the pre-throw is really disrupting the uh, the attack there. But a second pre-throw there, going to give them five balls. They're going to take out Storch on the Spartan side. Uh, time is paused there. I think a bit of a... Uh, bit of an injury, I think. I believe one of the balls might have uh, clipped her in the face there. Unfortunately, when there's five balls thrown, getting launched at you and you're trying to take a catch sometimes happens hopefully she's all right yeah Storch walking off there uh, phantoms apologizing there the, the headshot is unintentional but with a big dodge uh, and trying to get out of the way five balls it, it can happen yeah whilst whilst the uh, competitive rivals these uh, these two teams are still friends they're off, off court so uh, no bad blood meant in any of these attacks that does leave Phantoms oh, up catch. two players and a catch takes them up another player catch and then line fall and hit uh, but the catch first means that Alum comes back in now up three players on the Phantom side it's a much stronger set it's a great catch leaving Spawns leaving Pickering and Millington with a lot of work to do three ball attack here Spartans trying to bring it back with those fast running counters. If I'm Phantoms there, I'm, I'm potentially almost letting them do that and uh, let them give you the four balls. Oh, Smith goes for the catch, bobbles it <laughs> over the top of Allen, almost caught by a teammate but can't get their hands on it. But that does give Phantoms those four balls. Maybe they can capitalize on it here and get that next out. Pickering ducks under after the pre-throw. That's going to give them the three balls back. Need to look aggressive here. We're, we're running out of time on the Spartan side. It's good movement in the middle from Phantoms, though. Yeah, big steps to the side, getting low or getting high. Barnes are going to bunch up, but there's not enough time in the set, and Phantoms will take it, extending their lead now. 4-0. Paul comes from the outbox. Seconds left, do not throw. We'll stand at the back and hold and just play that time out. Smart game management from Phantoms there. Don't need to risk giving away a catch. Especially yeah. when Millington and Pickering definitely known for their catching prowess. Yeah, I think it's a huge benefit of having someone in the outbox is uh, keeping an eye on that clock. Yes, the centre referee is continuing to tell you the time, but you want someone in the outbox to say there is exactly seven seconds left. 
You should not throw the ball, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise things are going to go poorly. Yeah, good, uh, good teamwork there from the Phantom side. Looking for that quick start this time, but uh, Mans jumps over the, the low throw from, from Darcy. Barton's going to get the first proper oh, attack. A lovely, a little bit of spin on that. A little bit, a little bit of jazz on that one from Storch. Gets the hit low against Darkon Tite. Oh, it's a good jump from Mans. Aggressive uh, stance there from Darcy. Tries to get Mans as she comes forward, but big jump over uh, from Mans side. Gets the hit, gets the ball back. Four balls for Spartan side. Hopefully they can capitalize on this. And they do. Three balls, two balls into the middle. Hit onto the knees of Smith. And that's making the most of it. Now Now it's Phantom's turn with the mountain Ooh, to climb. Good, good start. Here. Great shot from Tranter. And this is what they're going to need to do. Uh, I think the if you open it up too much with running counters, then... That can be a bit of a risk for you because you do expose yourself. And like that, they take a trade there. Storch with a fantastic trade means that they take uh, keep the two-player lead, but Phantom's down just another player. Yeah, I think Spartans will be very happy with that. Very strong player to get out there. Sharp head into the outbox. Little jump. Follows the ball with a block. Difference in this set is uh, Mann's actually on court a little bit longer. Previously caught both times by Darcy, but this time she takes Darcy out. Although as yeah, I'm singing phrases, she is unfortunately hit out. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of learning from mistakes there. It's um, y you get a very small number of chances in dodgeball when you uh, when you actually look at the uh, turnover. I think that's a hit there from from White onto the right hand side. That's a great shot. Uh, it leaves Tranter on her own. Um, yeah, you get few chances in dodgeball to uh, to do something. So you know, uh, Mans has a couple of sets where Darcy gets the better with the catches. Uh, she adjusts. Um, waits this time and then throws that uh, that post throw, that running counter uh, in a better area. Avoids the catch, gets the hit, and that's a big mental win. Three in a row is tough to come back from, but now she knows she's got a pin down. Uh, Trancer here with, again, as we say, a bit of a mountain to climb. She's going to give Spartans the three balls. Uh, and I would expect her ball comes back here we go now Spartans with three balls I'd expect uh, a pre-throw and a drop down into a catch that's a uh, Tranter's bread and butter there's the pre-throw she knows it's going high doesn't drop down that's my excuse <laughs> White threatens the running counter but they're getting the call from the outbox as well the time is low they don't need to throw an effective double, double running. running counter to finish the set there yeah, they're going to have to release their play two was called, so they make sure they go together at the same time, so they can't be caught, and they do take out Tranta. Bringing it now to 4-2. I think really good set from Spartans there, much better, as we said. More learning from their mistakes there, especially from Mans, and then really good game management, throwing a couple um, wider throws, making sure it's not being caught, and then a perfect double encounter to finish off the set. Yeah, Spartans bring it back, 4-2. But a pull over the line there. They get a hit early on, and, and then Pickering. and then a, a blind shot past the centre player. Not much uh, White can do there. Could, I don't know, you could argue that she could have left the court faster, but like really, that's just in an instant, and uh, uh, there's not much you can do there. But the middle line fault getting pulled over. The blind shot behind uh, takes out Pickering as well, and two players up early on for Phantoms. It's good Probably movement means, for Mans. Again, the Phantoms need to look. Uh, so Spartans this time need to look at those single ball hits. Uh, the running counters kind of open up the trades. Spartans really need to be uh, avoiding trades at this point and just taking those single hits. Phantoms, though, on these uh, two balls, I think it's a good opportunity for them to really open up with those running double counters. Well, we'll see a two ball throw onto the left hand side. Uh, ball to give Phantoms four balls, but if you can dodge this, then uh, taking that hit is really important. And they do. And they do. And Good they move do. from Millington in the middle. Giving four balls to the side of... Oh, no, sorry. Three balls to the side of Spartans now. Spartans going back to that single ball. That, that trust of your middle players is really important. If you can trust that your middle players are going to do everything they can to get out of the way, then you can afford to throw those two balls to try and bring the set back, to try and guarantee that hit. Especially when you're down to um, 
three or four players and they've got a bit more space to dodge, are those players going to use that space well to, to really get out of the way of those multi-ball throws? Free throw there from Dalkin Tite, but uh, yeah. Gedlin getting out of the way of it. I mean, just to, on that note, I personally actually prefer when there's only five or four players on court. It means I can yeah. actually dodge more. <laughs> oh, Dalkin Tite almost grabs the high catch. Can't keep her hands on it. But the uh, trade back from Smith gets the hit. Big free throw from Darcy. It's a bit lazy from Spartans. Ice yeah, I've been there myself all times. When you're, uh, when you're walking forward and making that call, I think it's very easy to kind of go like, it's almost like a deer in the headlights kind of way to just kind of stand there and, uh, and just not react to the free throw. Good running counter there. Storch takes out Alum. Only down by one player now. Four balls on the side of Phantoms, but they can only throw three of them. They're going to target Millington. Can't get the hit. Storch looking for the post throw. Can't quite find the leg of Smith. Means no balls? One ball for Spartans? One ball. Here comes Storch with that ball. Looks for the running counter again. Can't get the hit on Smith through the block. Low on time now. They get Good the double hit. throw, but the running counter finds Storch the hit on hit. Storch. Leaves Millington alone. And time goes. Another Not set of Phantoms time. by the skin of their teeth. Good effectiveness on those double running counters when it really mattered. Yes, Spartans got the hit into the middle with their two balls, but uh, Phantoms made sure that they snapped back with that hit straight away to keep that one player lead in the dying seconds. The Millington can't quite get up court fast enough to, to take that final hit to try and draw it out. But that leaves Phantoms 6 2 up. A couple of dominant sets from both sides and a couple of really tight sets as well. Yeah, final set of the half. It's going to be a big one. If Phantoms can get this, really extend their lead, that's a massive mental sort of advantage there going into the second half. But if Spartans can bring that back just to a one set deficit, I think that'll really help their morale and momentum going into the second. Yeah, definitely 6 4 feels like a, uh, a very oh, attainable great shot. Hit. Great post throw there from Gedling onto Dalton Tite. Nice to see Gedlin coming back into her own. Um, she did suffer quite a bad finger injury um, last season, needing an uh, operation. But uh, nice to see her back in court, thrown again, trusting that hand. Yeah, it's been a fantastic player. Um, oh, that's <laughs> commentator's curse. Actually, gets a running yeah. counter from Sharp there. Gets Sharp low, but Sharp alive. follows a low. But Phillips is hit out by Pickering. Oh, Sharp goes Sharp to drops the ball. pick up the ball, but the Storch throws the Storch throws the post throw just as Sharp tries to uh, recover the ball that had bounced back to it and knocks out of the hands. That is a loss of control, which sends Sharp to the outbox, and Spartans win that one-minute set by, I think, one player in the end. Yeah, again, by the skin of the teeth, these sets have been so close so far. It's been good game management overall. Uh, obviously that last set looking a little bit more frantic as one minute sets often do as it goes on but overall I think it's been really good from both sides so far as you mentioned really good running counters from Phantoms but I think similarly Spartans as well when they're seeing the opportunities they're really going for it And kicking off the second half here, 6-4 up are Phantoms. They're going to win this runoff with Dalkin Tite in the middle. Phantoms going for a quick start. All three of them coming up at the same oh, time. A, a hit onto White and Storch takes the rebound catch, which means uh, White goes out and comes back in for the catch again. And uh, Spartans take over one player lead. And four balls to Spartans. They make the most of it, get the hit against Darcy. That's a huge start to the second half for the Spartans side. Um, Yes, there's a bit of luck with how that rebound goes, but there's awareness from the Spartan side to make, th make sure that they take that catch. Yeah, fantastic start for Spartans. Coming out the gates hot and they're not slowing down. They're keeping the pressure on the running counters. Good cover from Gedling. She gets hit, but Millington gets the return. Again, opening up those trades when, you're, uh, when your player's up is, is really like beneficial, really helps compound that league. Yes, they didn't hit the post throw um, and the second throw, but then once Phantoms try and capitalize oh, and get the hit what? back, then they make the most of it. And then 
Hickering taking a lovely catch on the back track. Phantom's trying to take a bit more of a defensive um, way to come back with the post throws. I think that's a good way to stay a little bit safe. A great shot from Dal Katite into the middle. A bit of a no-look shot there. Gets the first hit back that Phantoms need to bring this back. Um, yeah, I think I like that attempt from Phillips to go for the post throw attempt rather than going all the way up. It means you can stay a little bit safer and try and pick off Spartans one by one. Unfortunately, Pickering is absolutely ready for it and takes the catch to compound the league, lead even more. Running from Dalkin Tite, dramatic dodge from... Um, Liv Babilova, who's Babi come on for Ellie Manns. Making a, a good start to the set already with some uh, dodging. Surviving is important, as we know. Big running double, gets the hit against Gedling. And there's uh, no one there to protect again from the Phantom side because they run. Uh, Phantoms ran at the only ball Spartans had. Storch stays high, looks for the trade, but Sharp gets under it, which means they've pulled back another player. Three to two now. Phantoms looking for a, a big comeback here. Getting towards the end of the set, these two players have done a lot of work already. Fatigue can set in in a in an own set in a in a single set when you're doing the whole comeback by yourselves. So they need to keep that quality of throw up. I think they've done it fast enough that they're going to stay on top of it. And they get another double running on into the middle against Babula. And they have even things up. Spartans yeah. hopefully... Uh, Spartans are hoping to uh, use the, the freshness of their two players that have not done as much as the Phantom side. Hopefully those qualities of throws will be better. Phantom's hoping that the momentum and the energy is going to carry them through to the end. They're going to have the three balls here. But that is time. What a fantastic comeback from the Phantom side. Really well done from Sharp and Dalkin Tite. Yeah, it's going to be rough for Spartans to take. It's often in such a commanding position at halfway through that set after some amazing catches and some big hits. But, like, Phantoms are amazing from Sharp and Dalkin Tite. As you say, the efficiency on those double run encounters was just superb, hitting every single time. They managed yeah, to draw that set. I think it's a really good decision making there, looking at uh, targets like uh, Gedling when she was the only one holding the ball, meant that uh, there was no there was no trade to open up because they pinned Gedling down on the running counter. Big post throw there from Pickering again. Gets the hit against Darcy. Pickering again coming up for the running counter. Mm. And the cross court from Gedling gets the hit against Phillips. Protects Pickering, but goes out herself for it. That's still a positive trade from the Spartan side at this point, being one player up. They do lose Gedling on the wing, but Storch takes a place uh, just as fitting to be on that wing. Gonna fake the running counter here, uh, up to take three balls. We've seen a lot of two ball attacks come out from Spartans. We might see that again, try and secure that lead by another player. Instead, we see a, a block on the P throw. Single from Storch. Doesn't find its target this time. Phantoms need to try and bring it back. They go for a throw oh, into the middle and hit. then the delayed throw onto the winger. That's a, a similar strategy as what we've been looking at in foam this season. That kind of like um, delayed shot onto the winger. Just wait until they take that one step up. I've not seen it much in cloth, but wow, that was uh, very, very effective from, the, from Transit. Yeah, on the previous two plays, Pickering was going for that post uh, running, post standing, so she knew that she was going to be doing it. So really smart from Tranta. As you say, that delay throw, perfect hit. Nice Storch finishes the job on uh, Dalkin Tite as uh, Spartans managed to get her up court without a ball. Yeah, great she placement takes just over the shoulder. 4-2 up, sharp again. This time Alam in the, in the two players side. Alam out, I th think, for a line fault, unfortunately. Leaves Sharp on her own. We've seen her do it before. I think a clip on the arm there. I know maybe that ball bounced. Okay. We got... Yeah, she was checking the refs. Three balls on the Phantom side. I'd expect to see a running double counter from the Spartan side here. A low shot into Storch to stop her from uh, getting off that running counter fast. It means that they'll take three balls and they're going to play it kind of safe. That's quite a defensive shot. Good dodging. 
I like that kind of play though, even that defensive throw means that uh, it kind of draws Sharp into the running counter and then Spartans can potentially get the two ball running counter afterwards. Oh, oh great diving catch against Millington from Sharp. Uh, Millington definitely trying to put that safe, but uh, Sharp just kind of gambled on a on a direction and what a grab that was. Yeah, really att attacked the catch, but it's a good double hit, takes out Darcy and White manages to stay alive on the running counter. Sharp low on time. Oh, gets Great the hit. hold call coming out there from the side of Spartans. White looks for it, but manages to hold. Gives them that win. Brings us even now. 7-all. And a timeout has been called. A timeout has been called. I think it's been a great second, uh, great start to this second half. Obviously, Spartans came out hot in that first set but you know as we mentioned some excellent double running counters from phantoms managed to sort of survive that first set but again then great control from spawns great game management a little bit of a scare from when Millington gets caught but as we mentioned it was a phenomenal catch from sharp but yeah phantoms, there's sorry, not a whole lot there that Millington has uh has done wrong maybe could have been a little bit wider but um if that ball sails by sharp then you know, you're, you're thinking that you've done a, a perfectly good job there. Um, it was just a really good read from Sharp and a, and a great grab. Yeah, I think this is also a, a smart timeout call from Phantoms, to be honest. I think Spartans are also calling one at the same time, potentially. But either way, I think if from the side of Phantoms, they'll be happy with this brief stoppage. As you mentioned, although they didn't lose that first set in the second half, just sort of could understand that they were definitely under quite a bit of pressure. So just going to time out, have a bit of a chat, talk about what's going right, what's going wrong, and just sort of quell the momentum from the Spartan side. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, although they've they've come away with a draw and a, and a loss, which isn't actually too bad, I think uh, they were very lucky with the uh, first set of the second half that Sharp and uh, Dalcom Tite managed to pull that out of the bag. Um, maybe a reflection of the effectiveness of those running double counters. Um, I think that at best when they're using the when they're using it smart, when they're not trying to open up trades when they're down. Um, but at the same time, if they get up, if they can get up early in the sets, get those first couple of uh, key hits, then they can use the double running counters to open things up uh, and just trade down towards the set win. Absolute rocket there from uh, transfer into the right wing, but uh, Pickering sees it sail by. Oh, and and shot into hit. the middle, back from Pickering. Nice and low, tough to uh, keep your hands on that one. Pickering Shake being a bit of a key there. player on this wing with the uh, strong throwing, both on singles and uh, on the post and running throws. Yeah, she's be she been a key player so far this season, coming off a MVP performance at the European Championships, and especially without Barrington on that left wing today, a very key player in this game. Spartans looking to take the lead with that single ball hit, but uh, can't find the target, and then on the running counter... Uh, Phantoms take that hit to take a one-player lead. Now they can stay nice and aggressive. Now they can take the trades. Darcy oh, takes the rebound catch. catch. Great yeah, place Darcy from Phantoms taking there. the rebound there takes them uh, now two players up. I think that was again a, a, just a good choice of like when to when to be really aggressive about it. They got a player up and then Sharp stayed high, uh, got the hit into Gedling as she was running forward, and then the rebound catch came from that. It's unfortunate for Millington there, she does the right thing, prevents that catch from taking place, but Darcy takes the opportunity and does hit her out. Yeah, it's a really good shot on the cover. It can be hard to hit the the, the moving target when the, there's someone trying to take a diving catch from a ball that's up in the air. Um, good accuracy there, but unfortunately Darcy is there to cover as well. Good awareness from Darcy to, to watch for that shot. It's very easy to stand there and watch what happens with that catch. Uh, but really your job should be to, to pin down Millington just as she did there. Four balls on the Phantom side, going to try and compound that lead. Big dodge to the side, can't stay on the ball, unfortunately. <laughs> Leaves uh, White on her own against four of the Phantom's players. 
with four balls. That's going to give Phantoms two balls now. You can see defensive plays from the Phantom side. I think they're looking at the clock here and thinking there's not long left. They're going to have three balls. Let's send a nice defensive shot. White's going to have to really search for this. It's nice and safe down to the right inside. White on the counter. Single ball at ball. Can't find the hit. Allen with a nice safe throw over the top. Give, Give that ball back, back to, to White. White. Low dodge from Allen again. Allen? Allen? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> White trying to look aggressive here. Looking for targets without the ball. I think this is better than looking for... Uh, trying to hit you know, the wingers with the ball. You want to look at open targets that are more free hits. At the same time, they're probably going to be dodging quite um, aggressively, which is exactly what the Phantom side did. They stay alive to take the set. And I believe that is... 9-7? 9-7 favour of Phantoms, yeah. Again, like really smart game management coming out from both of these sides when they are up in these sets. They know the strength expect? of the players opposite them. They know they can catch. They know they can get hits. So they're trying to limit any opportunity they can get to actually, you know, bring the comeback in those individual sets. Yeah, that's what you expect to see. Uh, what you love to see from the, the top two teams of the table this season. Really showing their, uh, their game knowledge, their game management well. So it's throw there, back into, into Gedling as she backs up, but the block is better this time. Three balls on the Spartan side, looking to get that first hit of the set. Take that one player lead and they get it into Smith. Fibula getting the first hit of the set, that means Spartans again, they can look on the aggressive side of running counters. Single ball into the middle, Spartans threaten but opt to take three this time. Might see two balls to compound that lead. Yeah, a bit of a, a quiet game for Smith so far. And as we sort of mentioned, these teams normally phenomenal catches in the middle and singles, but both teams recognizing that, putting them in safe areas. There haven't been many catches so far in the back line. Yeah, another another single ball hit there into the middle. I think uh, you play against the, the hardest throwers in the league and it makes you much harder to uh, to pull off those catches. It just makes them so much oh, more valuable as well. Both sides are going to struggle with it. And the hit from Millington as well. Superb effort there. Takes out Tranter. But yeah, you are... A single ball hit. Right. Pound this lead on the Spartan side. Uh, two single ball hits make the lead and then they take several balls and just throw them into oh. the left hand side to take that hit. It's a great shot from Gedling. Perfect placement. Any high and Darcy can look for that catch. But right on the knees. Looks like Phantoms want two balls here. They're back in there running post throws or potentially dropping for a catch here. That's uh, no, I don't uh, blame Alan. them. Their running counts have looked superb all game. Yeah, there's that running counter block from Storch though. Alan can't find the target. Pickering threatens the, the running, but uh, the call comes. Let's hold. Let's take four. And let's probably throw all of them at Alan. They follow the ball sharp with the free throw. Can't get the hit. And Spartans take the shot. 50-50 guess was wrong. <laughs> well, I think there was a line fault there. Refs do miss it, though. But good honesty from Alan. The Spartans take the set. A very dominant one there with two early hits and then just compounding that with a, a three-ball group throw. Phantoms decide to take their time out this time to try and rebalance things. Probably enough time for a couple more sets. Yeah. Still quite a few, a few minutes on the clock. I imagine about two more sets left. Nine, nine, nine points yeah. each. Whoever wins this next set is going to be in a, a good position to try and hold off at the very least for a draw. Um, but then in that final set, they'll only need a, a draw or a win to compound it. So I think this is a very important set to, uh, to take, obviously. Obviously yeah, at the end the, of the game, it's <laughs> when they're drawing, it's quite important to, to win a set. <laughs> Um, it's actually the exact same situation we had earlier on in the day in the men's Super League between Rangers and uh, Storm. 9 all towards the end, team calls a timeout. The exact same situation, this next set is going to be vital. Although uh, that game did actually end in a draw in the end. I think the... Uh, it seems like the, the important bit here, they're both really really strong on the the running double counters and it's important to keep doing that the catches haven't really come from either team so if that suddenly comes in that could swing a set for sure it seems like the really important bit is those early hits the team that's getting yeah. up 
is just able to compound that lead because both sides are so effective with those running counters. Um, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like they're at the same level there, and whoever's winning the the first group throw, they get that hit into the middle, um, or they risk it and throw two balls. They get a good a good trade, a favorable trade off the start. Um, they get one player up, and then that the team just decides, well, now we can take our trades and our running counters and be real aggressive. And both sides have been super effective at it when they've done it. So I think whoever gets this first hit here is going to give them a really good chance going into the rest of the set. Phantoms get the first, uh, the three balls first, and they get the first opportunity to try and make the most of it. Good movement in the middle from the side, red side, though. Yeah, Millington hops over it, gives Spartans the opportunity again to take that lead. <clears throat> Shot into the middle from Pickering, another hit. Tries to get the post throw. But it's a great catch. Darcy. Darcy stays high. Squats down into a catching position and says, thank you very much. We'll bring Smith right back onto the court. Gives Phantoms the two-player lead now. And after that kind of, after that trade and plays again, I think this gives Phantoms a really strong position in this set. Yeah, uh, Spartans, Spartans, I think, Spartans need to make the, the most hit. out of this with the, uh, the single balls here. This is They've got to make them count. They take two. Mm, <laughs> and that's one way to hit. do it. A hit onto Tranter, and then I think I think the other ball deflected into Allen, maybe off the block from Darcy. Great movement and from Babula. That brings things level. That is absolutely huge for the Spartan side. Now we sit in a level position again. It's a bit more of an open court. It's going to be harder to hit those singles into the middle because those players have got a bit more space to move. So I think at this point... A play there. Throw at the ball holder. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's risky for both teams to try and open it up into running counters here. It might be who takes that aggressive step first. And that's the aggressive step you're talking about. Two balls released over on that right side over at Imi Sharp. She gets under them, giving four balls to Phantoms. Risky play from Spartans. I don't hate the that's idea, but the dodging. execution's got to be great. Great dodging from Gedling. Need the balls on court to cover Mans. The balls aren't there yet, but Mans is able to dodge Really important, again, some very open play, but just trying to put those balls outside of the body. The Dodgers are good enough to get out of the and way. there's a catch. A catch from Darcy. Takes Phantoms. Two players up. Spartans punching the middle to try and take the catch in the dying seconds and they step of the set. Off. And they Spartans off step one off second remaining. to get the final set. So at 9-9, nine, nine, if Phantoms win that set and full time goes, then that's it, 11-9. But Spartans opt to step off in the dying seconds, uh, knowing that they can't win the set. They can't take the catch. Uh, the balls go sailing by, so they step off immediately, which forces a final one minute set. At 11-9, it means that Phantoms can't lose, Spartans can't win, but Spartans can bring back a set win in this final minute set to take the 11 all draw that's their aim at this point a minute goes by very very quickly so that early hit is going to be even more important i think a, like a bounce a potential, potential it's a low a very very low catch either a floor first and then catch um i think you've got three options here it's either floor first and then catch a clean catch or what is not often called by referees is a <laughs> is a like trap between the legs where it's hitting the floor at the same time it's not called often because it's very hard to like yeah, they, see they, that they dead the ball as it hits them and so it's not actually a catch it is it's supposed to be called as a hit but you are correct i very rarely see that actually called yeah i think i do generally find that okay like if we had you know all the technology to get all the slow motion replays <laughs> maybe you can call it better but I think it's very rare that you are confident enough as a referee, as a sideline ref, when you're probably the only person with the correct angle to say, I think that simultaneously hit the ground and legs at the same time um, that you know didn't manage to get the hands on it. It is a tough yeah. thing to call. So the more neutral thing is to say, uh, like, no hit. Just call it as no yeah. hit. I think Which that's is what they've the, done here. Both sides will be happy with that. Tranter is around and neither is Storch. Six either side. 
post throw from Gedling, really, really strong throw. Um, onto Dalkantite in the backtrack, gets the hit, takes Spartans one player up. Gedling gets out the way of the single ball attack. Phantoms with uh, about half the set remaining to get a hit back here. They only need to draw the set to win the game. But they are down a player. Double running onto Gedling, gets the hit. That's the player that they needed. That's the hit that they needed. Double running now level. proving fruitful as always for Phantoms. Phantoms with four. And they get a hit into on the that middle. Hit into Alan Potentially there. not. Bit of confusion. At least the fish is for the catch. The... I think after the whistle there. So I think there's a hit on Alum on the right hand side, which leaves Phantoms with four. There is five on the Spartan side, and I think the hit there on the right hand side was after the whistle against Storch. Uh, Storch thinking that they were level with players on court means that she looks for the catch there to try and win the set. But I think that yes is after the whistle, which should mean that we are four players on the Phantom side, five players on the Spartan side, which means it's set win Spartans. Yeah, I believe you are correct in that breakdown. I think the reason Sharp releases that ball is she sees her teammate get hit and recognizes she needs to get the return hit. But obviously Storch under the uh, under the wrong impression. But yeah, I believe that is correct. Spawn should be winning the set, which. And that is the case. The referees give this set in favour of Spartans, meaning the game will finish 11 apiece, and it is another draw between these two teams. Well, we said at the start that, uh, you know, top two teams, they haven't faced each other yet. On paper, maybe it should be Derby, but Spartans are the reigning uh, champions. And there we are. What a result for uh, Spartans to win that in the dying seconds. Um, what a game between both teams. I think the, uh, the running counters really were the MVP of that. Bit more chaotic in those last few sets, but hey, that's, uh, that's what we're here for. My God, what a game. Yeah, fantastic game. Thank you very much for joining us. My name has been Alex Such. And my name is Matt Wheel. And please join us next time on Dodd Central. And he gets over the second. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back.